Hi everyone! So glad to be here. My name is Ashley and I will be talking about German New Medicine, how I healed my acne, using these principles, and how you can be free from fear of literally any symptom you are experiencing right now. So I'm also going to be looking at comments on my laptop so I don't get distracted. So um, once you come on, say hi, say where you're from, and I'm just going to get this set up real quick. Um, also, I just got back from beautiful Hawaii. Oh my gosh, it was so magical. I want to go back already. It was just so lovely. Um, okay, let me see. Awesome. So yeah, I'm going to turn the comments off on my phone since they're very distracting. Um, also, my hair is like huge right now, so hopefully it looks okay. <laughs> so like I said, as you're joining, say hi, say where you're from, and if you've ever heard of German New Medicine. So I will be checking in with the comments, so let me know if you have any questions, any thoughts, any symptoms that you're currently dealing with. I'm going to kind of do an overview of what GNM is and go over the five biological laws. I'll also post after this video a little bit more in-depth um, review. And I also wrote a book on um, this, which you will have access to um, this ebook, which goes more in-depth in the, the five biological laws, more of my story, more examples of my life of seeing these, these laws at work. So, um, we are going to dive in. <clears throat> so, today I'm going to be talking about the five biological laws, and first I'm going to share a little bit more of my story. So, I'm actually a registered nurse. Uh, I say I'm a retired registered nurse because I haven't practiced in three years, um, because it was not aligned anymore. But during uh, the course of my nursing experience, I actually started learning about German New Medicine, which was interesting because it's a, a very different perspective than the, the medical model. And I was very intrigued um, by German New Medicine, and I was just very fascinated because I was like, this makes so much sense. And German New Medicine originated from... Uh, his name was Dr. Hammer. He was a medical doctor, very healthy, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally. And his son, Dirk Hammer, passed away from an accidental gunshot wound. So he passed away from complications actually in Dr. Hammer's arms. And so several months later after his son passed away, Dr. Hammer developed testicular cancer. And so he started looking into the, the correlation between some type of shocking event or trauma in, in someone's life and cancer. And so actually the testicular cancer is called a loss conflict from the GNM perspective. And so since Dr. Hammer was a medical doctor, he was able to talk to real life patients and he focused on cancer patients and so that is why the, the first biological law is called the Iron Rule of Cancer. And so 100% every single person that he talked to, before their cancer diagnosis, something traumatic had happened in their life, whether it was a divorce or um, a death or, you know, something. Every program is different in terms of kind of what the psychobiological cause is or kind of what, what button is pushed in your brain. And so he was able to, to study these patients and every single patient had some type of trauma, some type of conflict that had happened before the cancer diagnosis, which is pretty mind blowing if you think about it because our medical system does not treat any symptoms like this. Um, it's a, you know, a freak accident or it runs in your family. But Dr. Harmer was able to actually trace back 
all of these patients with some type of trauma or a conflict. Um, and so, so I have some notes that I want to go over to make sure I don't forget anything. So like I said, every significant special biological program, which is what they're called, it's kind of a mouthful, starts from some type of shocking event or trauma. And it affects the psyche, the brain, and the organ at the same time. So all three. And um, it also doesn't have to be something super crazy and traumatic. It can be something as, as shocking as an unexpected um, conversation, an argument, um, something that's kind of, that's over your emotional and stress threshold. So everyday stress and everyday things that are, you know, it's kind of a lot for you, but you're expecting, that's different. So, what is different about GNM is that, that every single person experiences trauma and conflict differently. And so person A over here, you know, may get a divorce, um, get divorce papers, get served, and they may not experience a conflict at all. And person B over here gets these divorce papers served to them and they can experience a separation conflict, a loss conflict, um, a death fright conflict, um, a feeling like a fish out of water conflict, which affects the kidneys. And so it just depends on, you know, where, where are you emotionally and mentally and physically when these shocking things come up in your life? And you know, what has been your history? What has been your past? And if you have chronic symptoms and you have chronic things going on in your body, there's things in your life that can affect and cause those triggers and those tracks to be perpetuated because your brain already has those neural pathways and they're very well developed. And so I like to think about um, the analogy of like a hiking path. I love hiking, being outdoors. And if you think about if you've ever been hiking or driving on a, you know, a dirt road or a two lane road, or maybe you're just four wheeling it in the middle of nowhere, it's a little bit harder than driving on a paved highway. And so our neural pathways are very much like that. Your brain doesn't understand the concept of, of good and bad. It's just like, what's the easiest way to get from point A to point B? That's it. And so, you know, once you start to shift those perspectives and start to see like, okay, my symptoms are not bad. They're just telling me what's going on in my brain and how I'm interpreting things in my life. It's pretty, pretty epic and pretty life changing because you take your power back. In our society, we're so used to giving our power away to doctors, gurus, teachers, priests, pastors, no, and no matter what your beliefs are, you know, I'm not saying that anything is, anything is wrong, but it's like, once you start to realize that you actually have the power within you and that usually subconsciously or unconsciously, somehow you are creating these things in your life. And so once you start to pull that thread and you see how you're doing it, then you can start to shift it and you can start to see how you can change your perspectives and see things differently so that you don't have to keep experiencing your chronic symptoms over and over again that are debilitating, that are painful, that are just uncomfortable and not fun to deal with. So. Um, I think that about covers the first biological law. So also you can have localized conflicts or general conflicts. Localized conflicts affect a specific area on the body and then generalized conflicts affect the whole body. Like I said, this is an overview, so I'm not going to go super into depth. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Hi, Mary. Hi, Maria. Hi, Benji. Thank you, Benji. It's new. I got it for the photo shoot for Hawaii, but I didn't end up actually using it because I had so many fun outfits to wear that we kind of ran out of time. Um, let's see. So the second biological law, let's see, um, is called the law of two phases. 
And so this is what is um, interesting about noticing your chronic symptoms. So actually I had some, uh, some symptoms when I came back from Hawaii. I'm um, not going to go into it because it's kind of personal. But uh, I've been sleeping a lot. Also the time zone change and then also daylight savings. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot of ups and downs with that. Um, but you have what's called the conflict phase. So this happens when, okay, I'm just going to use the example of divorce. So you get served divorce papers unexpectedly. You don't think there's anything wrong in your marriage or maybe you're kind of in denial. So shocking event, you're served divorce papers. And then you go into what's called a conflict active phase. And so I'm just going to use the example of a separation conflict. So you go into conflict active phase of separation conflict. And this conflict during this part of the phase, no symptoms. You don't even know maybe that you've experienced a conflict at all. And then comes the resolution or you resolve or you heal or you somehow work through this conflict, this trauma, and then you experience symptoms. And there's actually multiple types of separation conflicts, so multiple types of symptoms. And you're usually more tired, you need more rest, you actually can need more protein during the healing phase. And so, um, you know, just start to notice in your own life, when do you experience symptoms? When do you feel more tired? When do you need to take more time to rest? And then during the conflict active phase, you're usually more anxious, have a hard time sleeping at night, you get up in the night and you can't sleep and your thoughts are racing. And that's because your brain is trying to help you. Your brain is like, hey, how can I uh, resolve this trauma? How can I help this person deal with this situation better? And so not being able to sleep or um, waking up in the middle of the night, your, your brain is trying to help you. <laughs> and so as frustrating as it might be, um, just know that your body is trying to help you and if you need to take naps during the day to sleep it off or whatever, that's totally cool. And yay, I'm so excited. You're excited to learn, Benji. Glad to have you here. Um, that about covers the law of two phases. So there's also what is called um, a hanging healing. And so for many of us that have had chronic symptoms, so for me, I experienced um, moderate to severe acne for over 13 years, which is a long time. And so I was in a hanging healing. I would heal, I would get the symptoms of acne, have some breakouts, and then something would trigger my body and my brain to go back into conflict active. And then that's kind of how you keep the cycle of the chronic symptoms. You heal, you have symptoms, and then you freak out about the symptoms, which puts you back into conflict active, and then you heal it again, and then it starts over, and then it starts over. And so notice kind of what are your triggers? What, what uh, symptoms are you experiencing on a regular basis? And just bring some awareness and some curiosity to, to what, is, what is happening in your brain, outside of your brain during those times of your symptoms. Because that is gonna shed some light into kind of how the conflict is, is staying alive and how it keeps getting triggered over and over again. Um, yeah, the law of two phases. And then the third law is called the law of the ontogenetic system of meaningful biological programs. Say that three times fast. <laughs> so basically what this means is, um, so ontogeny is the origin and development of an organism. So basically it's embryology. And every part of our cells when we are being developed in the womb different layers of the germ cells correlate to different areas in the brain which translate to different symptoms and 
I know this is a lot, so that's why I encourage you to um, let me know your feedback on the end of the video, and you can sign up to get my ebook because I go into it more depth in there, and yeah, it's kind of a lot. So, <laughs> um, so we have uh, four germ layers. I'm not going to go into them, but basically, the oldest germ layer correlates to the oldest parts of your brain. And so if you think about us biologically as a human, we are a tube, right? We eat and then we poop. And so some of those are the oldest programs is the digestion system and the breathing system and some of the more complex systems. So any sexual conflicts or a type of social contract conflicts from like social situations or like a business partner type conflict, something like that, those originate from the newer parts of the brain. And so I, I use the example, it's kind of like our, our body is running on operating system two, iOS two, and our brains are on iOS 22. And so understanding that connection of this biological wisdom that lives in every single one of our cells, every single one of our cells. And it is there to help us, but we interpret so many things as things that are going to harm us. And there's really, there's really only two modes that our body has and it's feeling safe or feeling unsafe. And so how can you start sending that message of safety to your body right now? Because that is going to allow you to stay in this parasympathetic phase, which is the rest and digest heal phase, and allow you to move through the conflict and move through the healing phase without so many hiccups and pain and, you know, keep getting your symptoms over and over again, which is not fun for anyone. And when you do have those times of unsafety and things do come up because nobody here, I don't think, lives in a hole. And if you did, that'd probably cause another conflict, you know. Um, and so, you know, things are going to come up in your life and you can't protect yourself just like you can't protect your kid from everything. Even though you want to, you want to be able to shield them from these things in life that you can't control. But... The amazing thing about our bodies and our minds and humans is that we are resilient and that once we start to understand this ancient wisdom and understand how our bodies respond and how it works within our own individual lives, we can downgrade these shocking things that happen. So I'm going to give an example um, from my own life to kind of help you understand this biological law. So a couple uh, Christmases ago, I think it was two years ago, I was bringing a friend home from this uh, yoga Christmas party. Oh yeah, I'm also a yoga teacher. Um, and I almost got into a car accident. I didn't see this car. I was like this far away from this car hitting my driver's side door. And it was scary as hell. I had gotten into a real car accident several months before that, so I was kind of on high alert, um, so to speak. And I felt my heart beating a lot faster, I felt my breathing change, and I was scared. I was scared of, you know, getting into an accident, getting really hurt. Um, and then also the person that almost hit me um, didn't just drive away, he... Uh, proceeded to sit in his car and shake his finger at me and yell at me and I'm just like, okay, dude, like, didn't see you, we're okay, move on with your life, bye. <laughs> um, yes, so I ended up dropping my friend off at her house and I sat in her driveway for like 15 minutes. I was like, I don't wanna drive home. And I like driving. I've been a daily driver since I was 16. So this was a new experience for me to not want to drive. So I calmed myself down. I did some, some breathing. I did like a little meditation before I drove home. 
and I actually didn't drive for a few days. Um, I don't know if it was like the weekend or something, but I was able to take a three to four days break of driving and kind of work through what had happened. And so I actually developed some symptoms. I developed a sore throat, a terrible cough, and lost my voice completely. Like, not hoarse, but nothing. And so I looked into it, and I had experienced what is called a death fright conflict. And so during this conflict active phase, when it was triggered, my body was trying to open up my lungs and give me more lung capacity to help me deal with the possible death because your body doesn't understand that opening up your lung capacity is not gonna save you from a car accident, but that's just our biological response is to save your life. And so it was just really fascinating because I was like, okay, my symptoms make perfect sense with what I was just experiencing a few days ago, and I was fine. I gave myself time to recover, to rest, to you know, drink some tea, get enough fluids, um, because I understood what had happened. And so that's what's fascinating when looking into your own life, seeing what shocking things have happened in your life, and then did you develop symptoms after you kind of work through it in your head and whatever that means for you. So, um, hi Stacy. And so, uh, you know, start, start noticing that connection between the things that are happening in your life, these shocking things or maybe not so shocking things, and, and how you interpret it. Do you take things personally? Do you get really upset by the small things? Do you have a lot of repressed feelings and emotions or do you let yourself express them in the moment? Because that's how conflict lives on, <laughs> is when we don't express what we need, we don't use our voice to, to speak our truth, and whatever that may be for you. So moving on to the fourth biological law. Now you thought the last one was a mouthful. No, just kidding, this one's better. <laughs> Okay, so the fourth biological law, which is one of my favorites, is the ontogenetic system of microbes. So if you thought the previous three laws had dismantled some of your beliefs, get ready. Because this is going to blow your fucking mind. <laughs> so, <clears throat> microbes, bacteria, fungi, viruses, work with the body to promote healing. Now, if this just gave you a conflict right here, let me, let me pause for a minute. Because this biological law is one of the most profound. And so I like to give the example, hi Carol, yeah, you can stay on live and watch, yeah, watch the replay later, that's perfect. So the fourth biological law basically gives a pass to microbes. So bacteria, fungi, and viruses, um, are actually good for us. And so I like to think about the analogy of a fire and a fire truck. And this is from actually one of my mentors, um, but it's beautiful, so I'm gonna reuse it. So if you think about, okay, your neighbor's house is on fire and you call 911 and you know the fire trucks come, they're spraying down the house. Do you blame the fire truck for the fire? And I'm almost certain that none of us would say the fire truck caused the fire, right? The fire truck is there to help put the fire out because something else started the fire. Anyone uh, gonna sing this song? <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I have a whole lobe of my brain de de designed for um, song lyrics and movie quotes. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, so you would, you would not blame the fire truck for the fire, right? You would blame the fire for the fire. But in our modern medical world, we blame the bacteria, we blame the virus for the problem. 
when really the bacteria, the viruses, the fungi are there to help clean up the problem. They're there to put out the fire. And so when we have these shocking things or events happen in our life, our body goes into an adaptation mode. So either we have cell loss or we have cell growth. So basically it's kind of whatever program is running what your body needs in that moment. So when I had that almost car accident, my body started breaking down my, sorry, started um, adding lung tissue and then breaking down um, the cells in my throat so I could breathe better and open up my lungs. And so that's why when I developed the symptoms and I healed the conflict, my throat was swollen, I didn't have a voice, because the, the bacteria were coming in, and I'm sure I probably would have tested positive for a strep throat or some type of um, bacteria in my throat, but they were there to replenish the cells that had been lost during the conflict active phase, which is the second biological law, the law of two phases. And so, we, we wanna stop blaming the bacteria. The bacteria is not the bad guy. The bacteria are like microsurgeons. They either take out the cells that don't need to be there or they help replenish the cells that were lost during the conflict active phase. And that's the same with fungi and with viruses. And so what I want to convey about this law and just German New Medicine in general is that Symptoms are, we are not to be afraid of symptoms, but they're actually, they come from within. And the reason that we think that diseases are passed to each other or things are contagious is because, you know, you see person A in the store freaking out, having a coughing fit, can't breathe, or, you know, they cough all over you, whatever happens and then you develop symptoms, it's not because they passed something to you, but it's because in that moment, you had a conflict shock about them having symptoms. And so once you start to, to pull that thread, it's, it's pretty mind blowing because our society is built upon this fear, fear of germs, fear of our bodies, fear of symptoms, fear of fucking everything. And once you start to notice these congruencies and these, these things in your life and you see how it's played out in your body, it's pretty amazing because you have the power to, you know, when you see this person in the store or you see a family member, you know, or you're, you're with one of your kids that is having explosive diarrhea or vomiting, you can be there with them and support them in that time and not also experience the same conflict and have problems yourself. Right? Pretty fucking amazing. So, let me see if there's any questions. Yes, they are there for a reason. Wow. Right, Stacy? It's pretty, pretty crazy. So, um, and like I was saying with the last biological law, the third biological law, the oldest parts of the germ cells correlate to the oldest parts of the brain. Well, the fourth biological law, the oldest types of microbes coordinate to the oldest germ layers. So basically, um, and, and, I'm, and I'm talking about old in terms of um, biological development. So if any of you know anything about the brain, and I actually worked in um, neurology when I worked as a nurse, funny enough. Um, but you know, our, our brains are, all different parts of our brains coordinate to different parts of our body and our cells, and they help us do different things. And so the, the oldest parts of the brain correlate to the oldest conflicts, which also correlate to the oldest type of microbes. And so, um, basically the oldest type of microbes are um, fungi, mycobacteria, so like tuberculosis bacteria. And then um, the, the mesoderm, which is the middle germ layer, is bacteria, fungi, 
So basically any bacteria besides um, mycobacteria. And then the newest layer is the ectoderm, which is the outer germ layer, um, is coordinated with viruses. And I do it in quotes. Um, we, can, we can go into that later. But basically, uh, we're not really actually sure if there's any such thing as viruses. Uh, I have a lot of information about that, if you're curious about that. Um, but that's like a whole nother topic. Um, or like protein particles or exosomes, they can also be called. And so just like I was saying with the fire truck, these microbes are at the site of the diseased organ because they are restoring the tissue. They're either helping break down the extra cells or replenishing the cells that were lost. And so that's why it's also important to ingest, um, you know, things that have good bacteria like kombucha or um, fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, or just taking probiotics because we need those bacteria. We need them. And so much of our food nowadays, which I'm sure Maria talked about in her live a couple days ago, is not as nutrient dense as it used to be, you know, even probably 10 years ago. And so, um, it's important to give our body those nutrients and give our, our cells those nutrients and those vitamins and minerals and the bacteria that we need. Because when you don't have the bacteria, that can cause some more issues sometimes. And so actually that's why antibiotics take the symptoms away, but they don't actually help you long term because they can put you back into this conflict active state which you don't have symptoms in, but then your body's not actually healing whatever conflict that you are experiencing. It's just going back to conflict phase and then you're probably gonna have the symptoms again. And because now you don't have the microbes to help you either break down the cells or add the new cells, that's when um, you can have these problems as well. So. Um, let's see. So, since we're already here, and you're, you didn't all leave after the last biological law, <laughs> I'm gonna go into a little bit about epidemics and pandemics, um, because I think it's important, especially the world we're living in right now. And so, um, so epidemics are basically collective conflict shocks. So it's spread through fear, the media, and what is so interesting is that Dr. Hammer actually talked about, you know, the threat of a deadly virus. And look at the world we're living in right now. What? Um, also, he passed away a few years ago, so he's not alive anymore. Um, but, but yes, the reason that, you know, people experience similar symptoms is because they're all getting the same or similar conflict shock. Not because people are passing it, blah, 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 from here to there, you know, you go to the store and you interact with all these random people. No. You are getting the fear from the media or from your family or from your spouse or from your kids or your parents or whoever you're surrounded with. And that itself is causing your body to go into a conflict. So, Food for thought, turn off the news. I was just in Hawaii, guys. It's fine, it's great. The world is just fine. Everything's okay. So also, you know, how can you, how can you send that message to yourself that things are okay, that you're okay? And, okay, so. Um, Okay, I'll get to your question in a minute, Benji. Let me go over the fifth biological law, and then um, I will go into your question. So the fifth biological law, which is the final biological law, is called the quintessence, which is the essence of GNM, pure and concentrated essence. So basically, the fifth biological law kind of wraps everything in together. It's like a nice little 
bow on the package of the biological laws. So every illness or disease is part of a significant special biological program that is initiated to assist or help the individual during unexpected stress or distress. That's a lot of words, but basically your body is trying to help you deal with unexpected stressors better. And so when you experience something, some type of shock, your body is like, okay, I can help make you stronger. I can help strengthen your bones, your muscles, so that next time you will be able to better handle it. And so if you think about like going to the gym, lifting weights, you lift the weights and your muscles actually break down and then once you heal, once you rest, they build back up and they're stronger than before. And so that's what's your, what your body is trying to help you do. It's trying to help you be stronger so that next time when you experience the conflict, you're better prepared for it. And so that's, that's great and all, but most of the time these conflicts don't actually help us in our everyday life. They don't. Um, so let me just get a drink. This is probably the most talking I've done all day. <laughs> so something that, that I like to remind my clients is that your body is for you. Your body is trying to help you and you just need to remind yourself of that. And also when you're in some type of symptom that's painful, that's uncomfortable, of course your first response is, fuck, I don't wanna be experiencing this, this is uncomfortable, this is painful, like get me out of here. But if you can step back and zoom out and just maybe even close your eyes for a second and remind yourself like, I'm okay, everything is working out for me, my body is doing what it needs to help me, and I'm safe, I'm safe. Because when you, when you start to do that and you start to reprogram your initial reaction and response to things in your life, you won't experience as many conflicts because everything isn't a shock. Everything isn't the end of the world as we know it. It's just like, okay, you know, maybe that wasn't ideal. Um, maybe this conversation I had with a friend or not being able to see someone or whatever is happening in your life Maybe that sucks and it's kind of shitty, but also I'm okay. I'm safe, I'm okay. Things are still working out for me. Because that's really important, especially, especially right now, to send our body that message of safety and okayness. Because there's so much chaos, so much shit floating around that we can easily attach ourselves to. and become very chaotic within, but it starts, it starts within and we have the power to, to be that calm in the chaos, to be that, that ship on the stormy seas that knows how to navigate things and doesn't freak out when the big waves come, but knows what to do and how to take care of herself. So before we wrap up on the biological laws, um, there's a few more things that I want to talk about with the fifth biological law. Um, so something that I really love about Dr. Hammer's work is he really conveyed the message that nothing in nature is meaningless or a mistake. Nothing. Cancer is not a mistake. Acne is not a mistake. Allergies are not a mistake sore throats, mental illness is not a mistake. Um, 
And actually, uh, I'm not going to go into this today, but even mental health challenges or behavioral challenges, are they're called constellations, which affects both hemispheres of the brain. And um, they're actually supposed to be temporary and are for the, the individual's safety and well-being. And so that's also a whole nother slew of topics. Um, but even those things are, are for your benefit and to help you. And so I also want to, to offer, um, if this information is, uh, feels like a lot to you and feels, um, feels a little scary to adopt. I, I just want to offer you this perspective of trying it on. Like when you go to the store and you try on this beautiful coat that you want to purchase, but you're not sure. And just try on these beliefs. How would it feel to have these new perspectives? How would it feel to believe that your body is for you? That your body knows exactly what to do in every scenario and has never made a mistake. And that you can change the story. You can shift your perspectives, your beliefs to help yourself moving forward. And, and just, just try it on and don't take my word for it. Yes, I have a lot of experience. I've seen symptoms, I've seen these correlations, but don't just take my word for it. See how it fits into your life. And if you have specific symptoms and you're wondering um, what conflict it is, so um, let, me, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna answer Benji's question about rosacea. And then I will go into a little bit more of my story and then how moving forward, you can start um, shifting your perspectives. So Benji asked about rosacea. Uh, let me see. So actually, I'm also gonna post this website. It's called learninggnm.com. And uh, another GNM wizard put together on this site where you can search specific conflicts. Um, but, but sometimes it's listed as the conflict and not the symptom. So it's a little bit, you have to know a little bit about GNM before you use the site because it's not the most, it's not the most intuitive site. So, um, but I will also post some, some links from this site in here in case you guys want to look up your own symptoms. Um, and also I want to be a resource for you as well. And I will be um, doing a drawing for, um, I'm going to be giving away three one hour consults with me where we can dive into your symptoms um, specifically and how to work with me and get my ebook. So let me go into rosacea for um, Benji. Let me just see. Okay. Okay, so according to GNM, rosacea is a skin rash that appears on the nose, chin, and cheeks, and the conflict is experienced as a separation conflict. So anything skin related that affects the most, the most outer layer of the skin, so the epidermis, is a separation conflict. Those can manifest as different things on different parts of the skin but they're all separation conflicts. So this conflict is experienced as a separation from the face, either through a loss of contact or wanting to separate. So something like you want someone to get out of your face. You either want to separate from someone 
or you feel separate from someone or something that, you know, maybe a lover that was really good at touching your face or caressing your face or kissing you and you're missing that, or you want someone to get out of your face. So, um, yes. And then what's really interesting about, um, huh, these conflicts is that they can perpetuate themselves. And so with rosacea or any other skin condition, then you can feel like you want to separate yourself from the condition. And so um, for me, I experienced um, acne, which from the GNM perspective is a feeling soiled or feeling attacked conflict. So meaning you feel dirty or you feel attacked, whether that's physically, verbally, and when you pop your pimples, you may notice um, that you have more breakouts in the same area. Well, it's because you are attacking yourself by popping the pimples and you are causing the symptoms to pop back up again. And so what's interesting about a lot of these conflicts is the symptom itself or resolving the conflict itself, if you don't understand GNM, can actually perpetuate um, the symptoms. So, and yes, Benji, maybe you are sick of your family if, they're, if they get in your face. Um, and I can go, yes, so I wanted to talk about um, my Free From Fear Facebook group, and I'll also address um, Benji's question. So I've had this group, I think almost a year, um, and I do lives every single Tuesday in this Facebook group, and I go over more in depth the biological laws and specific conflicts. I've gone over allergies, rashes, um, asthma, different skin conditions, let's see, diabetes, Trying to remember what else. I've gone over a lot of topics. Oh, also um, cellulite, muscle pain, which is a, a self-evaluation conflict, bone pain, osteoporosis, um, knee pain, which is a physical performance self-evaluation. Let's see. Um, teeth. I've gone over some teeth stuff, which I've actually healed myself recently, which has been like so crazy um, to actually see the changes in myself. Um, yeah. So uh, in this group, I go live every single Tuesday and I usually do a poll in the group a few days before, which I'll probably post um, after this video about what symptoms you guys want to cover. You know, what symptom are you experiencing that you want to see the GNM perspective on? and it can kind of be um, a laser coaching session, but also give everyone in the group the experience of learning about that specific symptom, whether it, they also have it or they know someone. And so I, one of my missions <clears throat> in this lifetime is to really help people from all over the world understand this wisdom so that they can be free from fear of their symptoms, of other people's symptoms, and really get back in tune with themselves and their bodies and develop confidence in knowing that their bodies are doing everything perfectly and that nothing is a mistake. And also to just not beat ourselves up for when we have symptoms and really to to raise the emotional and stress thresholds with our, within ourselves individually so that when shocking things come up, because they inevitably will, especially in our very connected and technological world, that it doesn't have to be the end of the world. It doesn't have to be this earth shattering thing within ourselves. And so um, this Coming Tuesday, I'm gonna be going over rosacea more in depth since Benji has been asking me about this for the last couple days, last week, but I've been in Hawaii on vacation and a photo shoot and stuff, so I um, haven't been on social media as much. Um, 
So I want to go over that this coming Tuesday. It's going to be live in my Free From Fear group. The link is in the description above. And um, I will be going live at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'll be going over rosacea. And then if anyone, you know, comes into the group and has other questions during the video or um, comments or whatever, I try to answer those as I'm going through the video, kind of like now. But that's why I do it on my laptop because otherwise it's super distracting. So um, before we wrap, I will go over the comments again to make sure I answered all the questions. And if you have any, you know, aha moments or feedback that you'd like to share, I would love to hear about it. And I hope this has been helpful for you in, you know, kind of dismantling some of the fear that has been happening in our world, you know, not even just the past year, but for all of us, I think, you know, our, our whole lives to, to be afraid of germs, to be afraid of so many things, not just in this aspect, but um, to, to fear our bodies. And we've been so disconnected from ourselves and from other people at this, this deep level that we as humans, we need. We need that connection. We need that community to, to be seen for ourselves and to be seen from you know other people. And that's why this work is so important and I'm so passionate about what I do because especially in this last year, you know, so many things in our world have been trying to tear us apart and to just distance us from each other. And, and really at our core of our being, we need other people. We need other people. And not just, oh, we want to be around people, but biologically, we need people. And so part of my mission is um, I'm working on through um, my GNM community at large with some other practitioners and my social media to dismantle the germ theory, which is pretty huge. Um, so if you're also interested in following me on social media and being in my Facebook group, and I also have a few programs happening right now. My main focus is skin and learning how to reprogram your subconscious to let go of the beliefs you have about your skin and to allow yourself to heal so you can have amazing, beautiful, radiant skin that you deserve and that you've always wanted. So that program is called New Skin, New You. And if you're interested in learning more about that, please message me or leave a comment. And I think that's all I wanna share. Let me go over and see if there's any um, more questions. Um, oh, thank you, Stacy. What an enlightening perspective, right? It's pretty mind blowing. Yes, say no to the media and all the lies. <laughs> yes, Maria. Um, yes, please join my group. The link is in the description above. And, oh, thank you, Maria. Yes, your body is there to guide you. Um, oh, hang on. Uh, this is very interesting. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Awesome. Thank you, Benji. Yes, Stacy, it will, it will change your world. For, for the better, and um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So, if you've had any specific aha moments or you know specific symptoms that you're dealing with that you are curious about learning the GNM perspective on, I will be posting in the group uh, a little bit later the Learning GNM website. And actually, maybe I'll do it right now, just so I don't forget. Um, I have some other client things happening after this. So there is a search button on this website. Um, so I just posted it in the comments, learninggnm.com. 
Um, it, it, like I said, it's not the most intuitive, but it's a start in just kind of seeing the resources because there's hundreds of biological programs and, um, and it's not so much about the diagnosis, but the actual symptoms that you're dealing with. And then also when you join my Free From Fear Facebook group, you can search in the videos if you're looking for a specific symptom because I've done hundreds of hours of videos already. So I would advise you to search in the group first before you ask me on private message or um, ask in the group about a symptom because I may have already done a video on it. And so you can start there with the videos. I also have um, in the units tab in that group, I go into more depth the five biological laws because today was kind of an overview. Um, so I have five videos on that for each individual biological law. So, um, yes, yeah, trying to strengthen my mind body connection. Need this so much right now. Oh, you're so welcome, Mary. So glad you could join us. So um, that's a wrap. And thank you so much, Maria, for inviting me to be part of this amazing masterclass. I'm really excited to see Sue's and Mary's uh, lives tomorrow and Tuesday. And if you are also watching the replay, thank you for joining me. You can also leave comments, questions in the chat. So. Um, yes, I think that is everything and I will see you guys very soon on Tuesday in my group, Free From Fear. The link is in the description above and follow me on social media. I also have lots of really fun pictures and juicy offerings from my trip. So I would um, love to connect with you there. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and I hope that you can remind yourself that you're safe, you're okay, and your body is for you. So love you all. Thank you so, so much for joining, and I will see you very soon. Bye.